Hi, so I am here with Dr. Ashok Kapoor. Good evening. Sita. Good evening. How are you? Great. So the reason I'm with him right now, actually, the other day I had gone for a walk, and it's June. It's pretty hot in Dubai as of now, and very humid. You know, I was strolling on the beach, and suddenly I felt nausea, headache, giddy, and I got scared because recently I heard news is about the. Uh, young artists like KK and Siddharth Shukla who got sudden cardiac arrest so i was very worried uh, and i'm lucky to know dr kapoor and he's a senior cardiologist so i immediately went to him for a checkup uh, though luckily everything turned out to be okay for me but it gave us an idea to talk about this issue because i've seen a lot of news is nowadays of young people in the 30s 40s getting cardiac arrest so who better than to ask dr ashok kapoor thank you siddharth for being with me and coming for a checkup in fact uh, it was good of you that you came for the symptoms which you had in the form of headache and sweating you should always take this as alarm but uh, fortunately in your case it was a dehydration that gave rise to a sudden drop of pressure and you felt all this nausea headache and giddiness so we gave you hydration Right, and you are perfectly all right and fresh. So we have to understand that these uh, type of things are not very uncommon. In fact, of late, uh, recently, about three four weeks back, I will tell you, in the same bank, two guys, young guys in the age of 30s, both of them got heart attack, and one of them, unfortunately, we lost him. The other, we had to put stents and angioplasty, and he's all right now. I mean, sir, we can do our best, at least from our side. And uh, I always tell my patients that. A few points, five to seven points, you should always keep in mind because the younger generation is no more resistant to this heart attack. Once upon a time, we used to think so that that after 60s only you get heart attack, but now the commonest stage is 35, 40, 45. So number one thing is young people. I always tell them, which is very often seen, that they should stop smoking if they're smoking. Uh, they shouldn't be in the company of smokers. That is one of the major risk factors we see in younger population. So avoid smoking and smokers. Number two is very important is dietary habits. We should have a very very uh, specific diet related uh, classes. Uh, in fact, in our institutions and wherever you are working, and you should go to Google to see how best you can get the diet to. improve your heart circulation number 3 important point is is exercise the younger generation so busy in it computers media and their ambition that they forget that the regular program of exercise is important out of the 24 hours you have to give half an hour 30 minutes to 60 minutes of exercise on most of the days is sufficient that will take care of all your uh, circulatory needs and burn out the extra fats and the next point very important is see, avoid stress as much as you can so exercise good diet these all things uh, help you in relieving your stress your stress comes from overeating overworking over indulgence so this is how you can relieve the stress in your system and that goes to the long term to prevent a lot of heart attacks hypertension diabetes cholesterol and then a uh, very important point is avoid too much of indulgence in alcohol also that also some of the other affects the blood pressure sugar levels strike is right and uh, ultimately gives rise to heart issue uh, another thing i want to ask you any signs someone is more prone to getting a heart attack or a cardiac arrest we call them as risk factors yes. so is there any way we can see a pattern and predict the future fact heart attack Uh, we over the time we have done evidence based medicines very well tells us who are the people who are more prone to have heart attack so those are the people should be kept in special uh, specific pool and any alert comes from their side they should be given much more importance so like people who smoke heavily are at more risk this is one of the risk factor people who have diabetes they are at more risk the people who have hypertension people who have a strong family history there is a very specific pattern that that uh, mother and father both had heart attack at the age of 55 their children may have heart attack at the age of 50 and the 51 the next generation will have at 45 so this pattern is very specifically seen with the heart disease it becomes uh, it comes earlier and earlier with the young age you remember once upon a time the heart attack used to come at 65 70 came down to 60 then came down to 55 now we deal with the patients uh, in the age group of 40 35 like that there is a family history there is a strong possibility in spite of no other risk factors
Then obesity, I have seen the people who are obese, over obese, above the age, uh, 30 BMI, their heart attack rates are much more. More the risk factor, more the chances. Suppose uh, somebody is a heavy smoker, is a obese, has high cholesterol, has been having diabetes also over the time, strong family history, God bless him, he has to be very, very careful. So these are the risk factors and the patterns I was discussing. But um, I think the next point was, ki, what are the points where one should get more vigilant and alert and in, go in for some emergency measures. So the chest pain is one of the most important and the central chest pain, in the center of the chest, if somebody gets a heaviness, need not be pain, can be heaviness if somebody has put two, three stones on my chest, it's getting pressed and pressed and all the same, he gets nauseated, starts vomiting, gets sweating, feels giddy, blackout, feels breathlessness. So these are the group of symptoms. If they are all together, chances of having the person going into heart attack are more. And these are the people who should be given immediate care by the family members in the form of putting an alarm alert to 999 and informing them because there at least you'll get a lot of emergency measures. The medications can be given. But at home, if the person is having this situation, uh, educate everybody to do what we call as the basic life support measures where we, before the 999 people arrive, you can do some measures to save the life. So the whole society has to learn and the lives can be really saved. In fact, sudden cardiac death, 80% of the chances are that if he gets a proper treatment, life can be saved. I also heard recently in an interview one of the doctors said that you can always keep an aspirin handy at home and if you feel something like that you need to keep it below your tongue. So is it true and if yes how much milligrams of aspirin should be there and is it safe? It's a small dose not the heavy dose which you used to use for the painkiller not 500 milligram but 81 or 100 milligram of chewable or soluble aspirin which has played a big role in preventing heart attacks or at least the amount of damage when the heart attack is coming. But as I was explaining to you, the group of symptoms, if you have and you feel the ambulances will take time, there's no harm in giving a tablet or two of aspirin under the tongue, chewable aspirin. It will be not that harmful. It's a very small, we always call it as a baby aspirin or heart prone aspirin, 80 to 100 or 150 milligram can be given. It's not a bad idea. But then ultimately the doctor will decide whether it has to be continued or how it has to be given a shift. So it's a good question you have. So thank you doctor, thank you for your time and I'll keep bringing you on this channel and keep asking you some quick questions. Thank you. Sure Siddharth, thank you so much.